Hello everyone, my name's Emily, and today we are going to be reviewing Anna Huang's King of Sloth. This is the fourth book of her King of Sins series, and we're gonna talk about the characters, the plot, specific quotes I wanna mention, the book cover, and it's gonna be a fun time. So, quick disclaimer, the first half of this review is gonna be spoiler free, second half will then talk a little bit more about the spoilers all throughout. Let's get right into it. I have been an Anna Huang fan since her Twisted series. I found the Twisted series off of TikTok, which is like, I feel like that's where half the people find that series from. I've read all the Twisted series and I've been up to date on the King of Sin series. So far, King of Sloth follows Sloane and Xavier. Sloane is part of the like girl core friend group. She's a publicist and Xavier is one of her clients. He is the son of this billionaire who, honestly, I'm not really sure now that I think about it. I don't really know what the dad did, but he's super rich and he's like a party boy and that's kind of what we know about him from the previous book. So this is their book. I felt that the pacing of the book was kind of slow. I will note, Sloane was my favorite girl that I was looking forward to the most for her book and I felt a little bit disappointed by what we got from it. The book before actually King Greed, Alessandra's book, I was looking forward to that book the least and it ended up being one of my favorites. So some interesting things going on there. Essentially, this book kind of follows Sloane and Xavier and their inevitable attraction toward each other, kind of having them navigate that like odd publicist but client but kind of like his family is a client but he's not really the client as much she's more of his like romanticized babysitter to keep her in line and them kind of navigating that together i'm trying i'm looking at the summary i'm trying to make sure i don't spoil anything but essentially between the two of them there's a lot that becomes uncovered especially i'm not gonna I'm not gonna state what, but there's a lot about their past that kind of explains why they are the way that they are. There are a lot of past like demons they have to fight and confront, and they also have to navigate the tricky obstacles that come with a publicist and client very public relationship. I gave this book three out of five stars. It's probably my least favorite of the King of Sin series so far, which is really disappointing to me. I just found it very slow. I wasn't really invested in the characters that much. I felt like some of the plot points had a lot of holes in them and there wasn't a lot of logic behind it. And it took me, I think, three days to read the, this book. And if anyone knows me, I read a book in like average three to five hours. So that's not great, but Overall, if you're someone that kind of likes a very strong, independent woman who is very independent, which I love that, with someone who is very goofy and fun and easygoing and able to kind of get them to relax and chill out, you'll enjoy this book. It's very romance heavy. That's kind of the entire premise of the book. It's not very plot driven, I would say, even though there's a lot of plot points with the things that are coming over i felt like just those are various very much a subplot and didn't really get as much attention as i thought they should have but that is my spoiler free review let's get into the spoilers now we're going to talk about the plot first so i thought the plot was kind of boring sue me i like the whole premise of Xavier's redemption arc is like, oh, his dad's dying and they have this very abusive relationship and his mom died and kind of he has to overcome that and finding out more information about like how he blames himself and how he has to come and come around and kind of conceptualize that like, no, you were 10 years old. It wasn't your fault. It was a mistake. But then his whole redemption arc being like, oh, you need to run as a CEO for six months to get your inheritance of billions of dollars. I don't know, I didn't, I realizing when I was within the first like day or two of really reviewing what 
I just read, I was like, wow, I don't like Xavier. He was like this like very like spoiled, like granted like his dad was very abusive, but like he's 29. I'm 26 on the oak, so like he's 29. He is like this little rich boy who just goes around partying, who he's afraid of failure, but this might be even more talking about the characters, but like his redemption arc is essentially he starts a company that's like a in kind of an interior design company, but he's gonna design a bar because he's always been like so, he's always partying and he knows what the people want. So he's like, I'm gonna design a bar. And first it was to like prove that like he's like, I kind of want the inheritance, but then he's like, no, it's to prove I'm not a failure. You're 29 years old. Like take some responsibility in your life. Like you've never done anything. You're just, you've just been coasting off of daddy's money. Maybe I'm being mean, maybe I'm being mean. I just was like, I was just not impressed with him. I found him kind of boring and very out of Sloane's league. And then Sloane, her entire plot point was like the history, her, this was whack. Her family is like her main conflict where her fiance cheated on her with her sister and then the family just expected her to like bounce back and be like, oh, it's okay because they're in love. I'm like, and that ended up with them kicking her out of the family. They're all nutty. What? I wish we had seen more of the Penny plot as well where like she had a sickness that the family was very ashamed of and Sloan and Rhea would kind of be taking care of her and kind of seeing that relationship develop a little bit more. It just fell flat to me. I was like, it's just so obvious that this family is crazy. And I don't know if, I feel like, I don't remember if Sloan went to therapy, but I'm like, I'm glad they both end up going to therapy at the end. But I was just like, I didn't find the plot very interesting. And then it was the whole, the whole push and pull of the relationship where Xavier is like, oh my gosh, I'm so attracted to her and I love challenging her. And Sloan's like, this is a professional relationship. Well, like, I kind of agree with. What is happening outside? Can we relax? I'm trying to record a book review, please. Please stop. Anyway, but I kind of agree, like a publicist and client relationship kind of is a little iffy to me. And then also when she's one of the ones that's gonna be like on the committee to decide if he accomplishes his goal and gets his inheritance also feels like a conflict of interest to me, which like I know she's able to separate her pin, like her business life and personal life. And I know that Sloan is not someone that would let that affect her decision but it still, it still just felt weird to me. I felt like there was this like weird forbidden romance we were going for, but Xavier was so persistent and Sloane just like, was like, okay. 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 And then the thing that honestly bothered me the most was their like two month rule. I was like, why are we trialing a relationship for two months? Like, it's not like he's leaving in two months or she's leaving a job in two months. So they're gonna be separated or like some deadline is coming up. It was just like a very arbitrary, let's try it for two months and when they were getting close to it and they're like oh my gosh what are we gonna do after the two months like why didn't we just like keep it open like let's just date and see what happens and we can call it off whenever it was it was bizarre to me and then the last thing i'll note about the plot is i'm like a little annoyed with this underlying crime plot where like i marked multiple times where i'm like oh someone's suspicious there and i was like trying to guess who we thought it would be or who it would come out to be that was like creepy on them and like around them. But then it's just this like very anticlimactic, like Alex was like, Oh, I know who it is, but I can't release this to the public yet. And I'm like, are we gonna have to wait till book seven to find out who these weird people are that are like involved with Dominic's brother? Like it has to be that. That's who it has to be. It's whoever is involved with Dominic's brother and I was hoping it'd be someone that like we had already been introduced but I have a feeling it's not because like then the next book is someone we don't really know anything about and I'm like I don't, I don't want to wait seven books call me impatient I don't want to wait seven books to find out 
an underlying like crime plot and have that resolved when it's not really even contributing all that much to the book. Like I'm weirdly invested where it's like enough that it's like annoying to like point these things out. I'm like, oh, that's, that's something suspicious. But then like, we're gonna have to wait seven books for it. That's a little annoying, I don't know. So overall the plot, I just like was so underwhelmed. The romance, the drama, it was just so lackluster to me. And I'd, I normally love Anna Huang's books. So like, this is very disappointing to me that it took me one so long to read it and two, like I was like, this is one of what is one of my most anticipated reads of 2024. And now I'm like, I can't tell if just like my reading standard is changing or it's kind of like becoming the same thing over and over again. It's like not really anything that new. And to some people that's comforting to like kind of know what to expect with an author. But then again, I like Allie Hazelwood's books cause she's a very definite formula to her books and I still enjoy them. So I don't know. A lot to unpack there for sure. Let's talk about the quotes. So first quote I wanted to note was actually the dedication, which we loved. It was to every woman who's ever been told to smile more, fuck that, do what you want. And we just agree because we hate the patriarchy and misogyny and patriarchal standards, that sucks. The next quote I wanna mention, is like Sloane and Xavier are like unpacking. I don't know, they're just talking and Xavier said something to Sloane cause he's always trying to like learn more about her and dive deeper. Something he said was like, so you like to be needed. And Sloane's thinking to herself, who didn't like to be needed? Being needed meant we were good at and good for something. People didn't love those they needed. It wasn't the same as being loved, but it was better than nothing. And I was like, Sloane, please go to therapy. Thank goodness she does, but I'm like, Sloan, there's a lot we can unpack here. Next quote we're gonna talk about, and this is when I knew what Xavier's redemption arc was gonna be literally this far in. I was like, oh, we got it. Some Xavier's, he's at some club. He goes, objectively, the club had great music, great service, and great drinks. I would change a few things. The retro lighting design didn't fit with the futuristic vibes and the layout of the VIP lounge didn't flow as well as it could have. But overall, it met my criteria for a memorable night out. And I was like, ah, so he's very observant and maybe there'll be some interior design and architecture vibes in his future. And I was not wrong. Next quote, cause we have a little bit of an Easter egg. Sloan goes, I, wrink Sloan, I wrinkled my nose and you say I'm boring. His smile peeked out like a tiny row of sunshine through gray stormy clouds. Hey, if it's good enough for Prince Rice. I say Rice, I don't say Reese. Because all I think when they say that is Reese's Pieces. So I will always say it's Prince Rice. It's good enough for me. He likes sketching in his free time too. First Easter egg, Twisted Game Easter egg. The Anna Huang multiverse stays alive. Next quote that I thought was like really memorable and cute. I thought I actually like this component a lot. Xavier finds pocket watch that his mom gave her, him. And there's a message engraved inside that says the greatest gift we have is time, use it wisely. And I was like, wow, that's probably a good thing for a 29 year old who likes to party all the time to reflect on. I feel like I'm a, being a very big hater right now. And I'm just realizing how much I didn't like Xavier as much as I thought I would. And then we got another Easter egg. We're talking about who his committee members will be that will determine if he gets his inheritance. And it's Eduardo, who is his dad's best friend. Martin Herrera, which is one of his aunt's husband, Mariana Acevedo, who is the chairwoman of the Castillos, Castillos groups board, Dante Russo, which is a King of Wrath reference, and Sloan. And I was like, oh, Dante's in this too. Everyone's just in these books. That's something I will know. I'm not gonna talk, I don't know if I wanna talk about this now. I probably should have talked about it in the plot. I'll say this for the end of the quote. It's my little rant about the multiverse and the power struggle there. Oh, Kai shows up. He was at the Valhalla. Just another name drop, really. This is from Sloane's perspective. Some random guy shows up and all his description is, 
buzz cut, tan skin, bulging muscles. He looked like the type of guy who spent half his life chugging protein shakes and working out. He wore a black t-shirt and jeans and stared at Sloan in a way. Oh, this is Xavier, sorry. Xavier's perspective. He wore a black t-shirt and jeans and stared at Sloan in a way that made me want to punch him in his generically handsome face. Consider me a buzz cut hater, but as soon as I read that, I was like, oh, this is an ugly ex. Apparently I'm in a hater mood. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with me, but here we are. Our next quote is some people's anger ran. This is like Sloan and Xavier are together and someone's making, oh, it's the Mark guy. The buzz cut guy is there. One of the, like one of Sloan's like hookups. The quote is, some people's anger ran hot, exploding in outbursts and impulsive violence. Xavier's ran cold, smoothing his tone, frosting the air and sending another breathless shudder over my skin. I could and did take care of myself. I didn't want to play the damsel in distress and I didn't need a man barging in to reiterate things I'd already said. But fuck, sometimes it felt good to have backup, especially when it came wrapped in muscles and devastating charm. Alexa, Please cue Olivia Rodrigo's Prisoner of Love. You know, you know. Oh my gosh, our next one, our next quote is I was like, this is a dream date. This is a dream date right here. So one of Xavier's like dates he had planned for Sloan was them on, I'll just read it. A giant standing TV dominated one side of the rooftop, kitty corner to a table covered with every snack one could think of. There were white ceramic dishes filled with M&M pretzels, gummy bears, and other candies I can identify, like chips, cookies, sundry snacks, a champagne bucket next to tea, coffee, and three bottles of wine, one red, one white, one rosé. And then there was a mini fridge with water, juice, and soda. I'm like, this is the dream date. Talk about great snacks. I love this. This next quote, I'm like... I don't really care about just the reveal of the ex fiance. I'll include the quote still, but I was just like, yikes. Your sister? Oof. We have another little Easter egg of Alex Volkov where he's meeting up for a meeting. Kai gave Xavier a list of all these references and Alex was one of them. And then Dominic was also on there. I'm like, this is such a small world. And then Christian Harper, literally half of these are just like Easter eggs. I'm like, oh my gosh, why are, are we putting everyone and their mother on here? Oh, this is my one, okay, one of my predictions. I literally wrote a note of who, can this focus? Can you see it? Can you even see it on the sticky note? I don't know. Let's just read the quote. They're like at, I think Sloan's apartment. And it goes, a loud rustle yanked me back to the present. It was the type only a large animal could make. But when I searched the overgrown bushes surrounding the simulation center, I didn't see anything. Oh, just kidding. They went to a place to simulate soccer. I mean, no, I thought this was Perry. Perry is someone who runs a gossip blog and like is kind of low-key trying to just cause drama and ruin Sloan's life. But then now that we find out that there's this like underground crime thing, like operation going on. It's probably that. I thought it was Perry, but we don't even find out who that was. But my prediction originally was Perry. Now I'm like, well, it's, it's a crime lord. This next quote is relatable from Sloan. What the hell happened? One second I was working and smiling so much I scared Jillian. The next I was on the verge of a breakdown over a man. I'm disappointed in you too, Sloan. Another thing to note, another Sloan quote, I'm a Virgo, I hate surprises, you and me both. This is why I, there was so much potential. I was like, wow, Sloan, we could have gone along. I really liked you. And that's the thing, like she wasn't even that bad. I think I just didn't like Xavier as much. Oh my gosh. This next section, Bentley is Sloan's ex-fiance and he was like, hey, can we meet up for a drink? And he's like, essentially like, I'm complaining about my wife. Wait, are they married? Are they married? I forgot this detail. Are him and Georgia, Georgia Sloan's sister, are they married? I know they're definitely with baby. I don't know. But Bentley goes, yes, well, I didn't expect the pregnancy process to be so messy, but that's not all. Ever since we saw you at the hospital, she's gotten more paranoid. 
She accused me of checking you out and said I still had feelings for you. She said she, my, she was my second choice and that I'm always comparing her to you. The thing is, she's not wrong. Bentley, you literally cheated on her with her sister because you weren't getting the love and affection and sex as he brought up. He brought that up so much that he thought he deserved and now he's like jealous because Sloane has someone and he's miserable with a pregnant woman that I don't even know if he really liked that much because it felt a little bit more spiteful and just had a loneliness, but... And then, oh my gosh, and then Georgia shows up. Georgia and Bentley were just so annoying. I was like, please leave. So Sloan is arguing with Georgia because Georgia's accusing her of trying to steal Bentley away. Sloan goes, get out of my office. Speaking of getting rid of people, you know Xavier's going to leave you, Georgia's saying. I'm sure dating you was a novelty in the beginning. Everyone wants to melt the so-called ice queen. Bentley says that's the only reason he proposed. He liked knowing he was the one who tamed you and quickly realized his mistake, didn't he? Now let's take Xavier, rich, gorgeous, used to having fun. How long do you think a guy like that will stay with someone like you before he gets bored? <sighs> Georgia's also in this like weird, she has this weird competition with Sloan where like she has to be better than her and have like, if Sloan has something she wants, aka a fiance, she wants that. And I'm just like, the amount of disrespect to talk to your sibling this way and act this way is so rude and to say these things and also like the whole like taming thing like Sloan's a human being let's relax and not use language that way okay next quote I literally made a note I thought this was either Bentley or Sloan's dad but turns out we don't know who it is and it's probably the underlying crime con Ready? And this is Xavier, or Sloane, I can't even tell. And she's going to somewhere. And she's like walking somewhere. I literally could not tell you, I don't know. At the same time, someone came around the other corner and bumped into me, a baseball cap shadowed his face, his face, so at least there's a clue there, but he looked vaguely familiar. Before I could investigate further, he just disappeared around the corner and my curiosity about his Identity became an afterthought when I entered the vault to find Vuk and Willow waiting for me. That was Xavier's perspective. So now I'm like, who does he find vaguely familiar? I don't know. I literally don't know because somehow they all know each other. So like, I, it could be anyone. I don't know. I'm tired at this point. I'm tired of this grandpa. Okay. This next quote really grinded my ears. Xavier and Sloan are like breaking up, I think. Is Xavier's perspective. He goes, don't. I clench my jaw. It's not time yet. Their weird two-month period. Our trial period ends in two days. Sloane's eyes finally meet mine. It looks it was like looking at a sea of stars in the night sky. They gave the illusion they were within reach, but if I extended my hand and tried to grasp those fleeting emotions, they'd slide through my fingers like, like whispered taunts. What happens then? Then we end the trial and start dating for real. I didn't bother playing coy. That's what I want, Luna. Tell me what's not, that's not what you want. And I'm like, why did we set this for a two month trial? Like there was no deadline. Why don't they just like date and then break up if it's not working? Why is there a deadline? I don't, I don't understand. I don't understand. And then we get another this is Sloane's perspective. She's going to meet Xavier at the Empire State Building. And she's like running there and she runs into some guy and goes, green eyes, brutally fa- <laughs> Hold on. Green eyes, brutally handsome face. He looked oddly familiar enough so that it gave me pause. Enough so that it gave me pause. Made me pause, gave me pause. But he disappeared before I had the chance to say a single word. So now I'm like, at this point, I don't even put a prediction because I'm like, we're not going to find out who this is, apparently. Okay. And now I'm going to have to go back and look at who Sloane's ever interacted with. But it could be someone from the Twisted series because they're bringing up a lot of characters from there. And I'm like, who is Green Eyes? That's what I'm literally going to have to look into. That's vaguely familiar to Sloane. I'm like, oh, okay, whatever. And then the last note is Alex just saying they found who sabotaged. Xavier's nightclub and started the fire, but they couldn't disclose their identity at this time. All he says they had ties to a mercenary group that was targeting certain members of the business community for confidential reasons. 
And that's when I'm like, if there's a mystery at this point, like, reveal it. I don't want to wait seven books. That's a lot of books for a plot that like I half care about, but I care about it enough that like it's coming up and I, I feel like we don't know who it is because they are bringing in characters that we have barely seen at all. I feel like whoever is in charge of it, it's not going to be they're either going to be introduced probably in the next book or the book six because like they're just bringing in everyone. Okay, before we talk about the characters, I just want to quickly talk about the Anna Huang multiverse whole concept. And we found out here because Xavier has this like business proposition that everyone is connected, literally all like Christian from Twisted Lies, Alex from Twisted Hate, Jules from Twist, no, Twisted Love, Jules from Twisted Love. No, I'm, I'm mixing up now. Twisted Hate, Bridget and Rice from Twisted Games, Kai, Dom, they're all coming up and they're all using each other as like resources. And I feel like in a book world, this is very fun and cool to see all these different Easter eggs, but blame it on the current economy that is America right now. All I can think about is like, wow, this group of people has so much power. This small group of people has so much power and they can control so many things and get whatever they want because they have money and access to things. It just really had me reflect I'm like, wow, let's look at the billionaires in this world and what they have access to. Let's look at the people in the millionaires who can buy themselves out of court cases and jail time who can get people they care about out of jail because they have money, who use their power and influence to influence others. I like couldn't find myself enjoying it as much because I'm like reflecting on the real world and what's going on there. I'm like, wow, this is way too much power that a small group of people have. <laughs> what a fun time to be alive. All right, we got the characters and book cover left. Sloane was my favorite. I liked her so much going into this. So like, I knew I was going to like her. I loved how independent she was. I loved how ambitious she was that she went and started her own PR company essentially. And that she just really held her ground and stuck to her guns. Her family history was so traumatic. I'm like, I get it. Now I to talk to them. I'm glad she had Penny and Penny had her. I feel like we didn't reach her true potential though. There was so much to unpack with that family history that I feel like she should have been more damaged than how it came across. But I still liked her. Xavier I didn't care for. I felt like he was a little bit spoiled, a little bit bratty, a little bit like, I'm scared of failure. Like a lot of people are scared of failure. But like, when have you ever really tried to do anything? until little your inheritance was getting held over your head. I feel like his backstory was obviously very traumatizing with his dad blaming him for his mom's death. But like, I don't know. I felt like I was just, I didn't care for him. I felt like he was too like, oh my gosh, I love Sloan. I really, I'm gonna stop talking about him because I'm not gonna have him any more nice things to say. Penny was so cute. I wish we got more of her, so cute. Love her obsession with soccer. Also the not so subtle, subtle hints of Asher Donovan who the next book is coming out about with. I wonder if the underlying crime plot is gonna be in that book. Will we then not even find out what happens until that sports series ends? Can you tell this upsets me? I just want to know. We love Rhea, Penny's caretaker. Bless her for being the mother that Penny's mother could not be. Xavier's dad sucks. I don't care if anyone tries to say he has a redemption. Like he was abusive. Like you can't blame a 10 year old kid on your wife's death. Like looking at the facts of what happened. You can't do that. Xavier ended up in therapy because you did that. Like, I don't know. Was not a fan. Eduardo, bless his heart. I don't know how he's friends with someone like Xavier's dad. I can't even tell you Xavier's dad's name. I don't remember. 
but he was so patient and kind and willing to see the good in people and wow maybe i should be the same son's dad sucks the scan the whole scandal like this is where like it logically doesn't make sense he's like the kensington name and you tainted the name but your daughter like one of your daughters slept with your other daughter's fiance and now they're together and you expect the other daughter to just like take that with stride you've got to be off your rocker go to a nursing home because obviously or better yet go to a psych ward because clearly you're not mentally well sloan's stepmother also sucks just because she also as a bystander and contributing to that you are contributing to a toxic environment ma'am and her like reaching out for Penny's sake, it's not a redemption in my mind. Penny was threatening starvation and I don't think she had a redemption. I was just not impressed with that family. Georgia's absolutely nutty. Like girly pop, you're Delulu. And you're competing in a competition against Sloan that no one cares about. Like how old are you that you're doing this? Grow up, Georgia. And then Bentley, I could literally like jump off a bridge and I would not care. Is that off the record? I don't know. He was terrible though. Like to cheat on someone is one, not forgivable in my opinion. And then with that, your fiance's sister. And then when you impregnate said sister, you go back to your ex and you're like, oh my gosh, she's throwing a vase at me. And it's so hard because she's so hormonal. And you're so happy, and I don't want you to be happy, so let's get back together. I just like, I only like Sloane and Eduardo and Penny and Rhea. That's it. A lot of the characters felt very like one dimensional. I, didn't, I wasn't really impressed with the character development overall. I don't know. And then lastly, the book cover. Honestly, the book cover was a highlight. Look how cute it is. I need to change this lighting. Is that better? Oh, that's better. I hope I wasn't washed out the whole time. I love the cute little simplistic book covers. I'm a sucker for simplistic book covers. Also a sucker for when the object has meaning and it's cute. Love it. Overall, I just was not impressed. My like, I, maybe my hopes are too high. It was just fine. I wasn't really like engaged while reading. It took me three days to read it. And overall, I would say this was good, not great. I'm gonna still continue to read this King of Sin series. I'll probably still read The Striker, which has Asher Donovan, her next series coming out. But I think I just need to do some little reflection on. I can't tell if her writing style is just the same. My reading preferences are changing, maybe both. And if I'm into this still, I don't know, which makes me sad. We'll stay tuned for that when the next book comes out. Thanks for listening today, guys. Let me know your thoughts. Comment below if you like this, if you dislike this, like literally like what your thoughts are on this weird underlying crime plot. Please let me know. Or if you think you know who it is, let me know because I'm literally like what the F is happening right now. Make sure to like this video. It helps me a lot. Make sure you subscribe so you can stay along for the little book club journey we're having. It's so fun. And then turn on bell notifications so you don't miss any videos from yours truly. Last but not least, follow me on Instagram at dietitianemk where I post all too many things about my life and probably overshare. And you just get a little bit more BTS there. But otherwise, thanks for listening and we'll see you next week. Bye.